talking to us. But he wanted right. to talk about a Steph trade, and I always wonder what that take is because... It's a bad one is what I like to call it. Right. It's a bad one. Well, I'll tell you what they got to do, guys. Just my gotta, opinion. You got to trade Steph now to get maximum value. You got to kick this thing. You got to like look three years down the road, okay? It's time for them to break this thing apart. Curry's got to go. My, Curry's got to go. Why are you so scared? It's funny because you can use that sentence for both opinions. Okay, I, I respect all opinions. If you think that they should trade Steph, fine. I, I vehemently disagree with you. Um, I think it goes way, way deeper than basketball. That would be my take. I would ask you, if you think the Warriors should trade Steph, I would ask you to go well beyond the general manager's room. I'd like you to go talk to all the rooms. Go talk to all the rooms. Go to the business office yep. and just say, we're trading Steph. See how that goes. And if, you, if you're if you not thinking of those things, I'm sorry, you have to think of those things. That's a very, very big part. Our ticket sales oh, go up I mean, if you if you trade Steph. For 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 picks. This guy's bringing us down. <laughs> Zach. We got Zach Eady. I, I I mean I like Eady. Yeah, you you do? In the second round. Okay. I, I just I don't I don't understand that idea. Um and I don't think that you'll get what you think that you're gonna get. I think that there's this again, a figment of our imagination. That goes on in people's brains. If we trade Steph, then we're going to end up with Wembenyama in two years. Which, by the way, looks really exciting. However, even Wembenyama, what does that actually mean in the NBA in the future? I would argue correctly, by the way, the only answer remains, we don't know. Like, yes, rookie of the year. Do I think he's going to be a problem? Absolutely. I think he's going to be unbelievable. I also know the Spurs had one of the worst records in the NBA this year. And uh, and I do think it'll get better. And I think he'll be amazing and all the same things you think. But I don't know if Victor Wembenyama is going to equal championships in 2029. I have no clue. And I'd bet against it. I'd bet against it. I just think... You largely have to operate as a sports team this way. And that is, go for it. Just go for it. Not irresponsibly, but go for it. If you think you might be good, go for it. If you're wrong, I'm okay with that. Go for it. It's the same conversation I'm having, trying to have with Grandy over here, who before July 1st even gets here, he already wants to trade all the Giants. Just sell. Well, look. Maybe you might be right. It's not that day yet. It's not that day yet. Do you know for sure that last night's win didn't start an eight game win streak? Do you know for sure? No. Do you think it will? <laughs> Neither do I. Seriously. I don't even think it's going to start a two game. I don't think it's going to start a two game win streak, but I don't know. And so it's not time to freak out. And just blow everything up and sort of act from your negative emotion. The Warriors are also not there yet. You're not there yet. Because trying to be good this year does not necessarily, in my opinion, do the thing that everyone's so worried about and blow up the future. Well, especially if you ask them, and by them I mean Draymond and Steph and Steve Kerr and Mike Dun Dunleavy Jr. and Joe Lacob and... They are all of the same mind, which is, you know, if Draymond plays, if we win three more games, we're a six seed, and then we're a real playoff team, and then who knows what can happen. I, I was, you know, listening to clips today from Steve Kerr on another show, and he was talking about that very thing about 46 wins isn't nothing. So I think that they're wrong. Their mindset, though, is different than our mindset. Our mindset is you're a 10 seed. You're not close. Do something dramatic because you're not even close to being good enough to do anything. Their mindset is 46 wins normally is a real thing. And this year it wasn't. And the West is better. We know that. And we have to get better. And Steve has to get better. And the players that they have have to improve. And everybody has to get better. Their mindset is not blow it up. Their mindset is if we lose Clay and we lose Chris Paul, we have to replace those players. Yes. And I do think that they're telling you that by GP2 opting in and Kevon Looney. They picked it up. They're looking at every other piece, and Clay's the one thing that they can't control. 
And if they lose Clay, they're going to want to replace Clay with somebody who is as good, if not better, than Clay. The, by the way, they're not wrong with that thought that you are 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 talking well, about. We don't right know now. that. But no, no, they're not wrong. That forty six wins through all the frustration that you all feel about last year, the Warriors didn't suck. I'm sorry, they just didn't. They might have, by your standards, they might have based on your expectations. They were, and this is a fact now, this is math. I know you love math. Mm. They had a better record last year than they did the year before when they were the sixth seed and went to the conference semifinals. That's just true. Now, I know how people will respond to that. Yeah, but Mark, the West is better, and here's what Denver and Minnesota and Dallas, here's what they're going to do next year. You don't know. You don't know how it's going to go. So the Warriors are not wrong. If you're still like, I'm not on the camp of like, oh, if Draymond doesn't get suspended, they'd have been the three seed. I'm not in that camp either. And I don't think they were great last year. But I do think, and I've said this before, I sometimes feel like the fan base sounds like they went 36 and 46. Right. Not 46 and 36. And I get why. Standards are high, as they should be. But th- this idea that the Warriors are just like, it's over, they're junk, let's just sell this thing off for parts, I don't understand that. I don't even understand it, let alone agree with it. Well, they don't understand it, and they don't agree with it. And last year, 46 wins would have been good for a four seed. And the year before that, it would have been a seven seed. And the year before that, and I'm going pre-pandemic because the two previous years were not full years, but if you go back to 2018, 2019, 46 wins was a nine seed. So it's not as easy as, okay, 46 wins, you're going to be there, you're going to be a top six, and the rest of it, because I do think that the West is deeper and it's tougher now. So you you probably have to get to 50 wins to really be a team that can be one that looks at the playoffs and says, yeah, we're a playoff team at 50 wins, there's no doubt. But 46 over the history, even if you go back to 2017, 2018, 46 wins was a nine seed. So 46 wins is not good enough. No, and I know not. It's not nothing, and Steve is right, but you do have to get more into the 50-win realm, For sure. I think, to really think of yourselves as a real player in the West. For sure, but if your goal is to get to 50 wins and you fell four wins short, that doesn't sound to me like, you know what, I pretty much had it around here. Let's get rid of everybody. Agreed. Like, I just, I, that's, I, that's not where they are. Um, Tim in Stockton um, on Willard and Dibs. Hi, Tim, what are you doing? Oh, man, driving to Stockton, Mark, and uh, getting ready to call this Ports game. Uh, I think my nightmare scenario is standing pat. Just kind of be like, okay, we're going to we're gonna play Moody more. Trey Sachs, Javis starting from the beginning this time. You know, a cohesive unit, no Draymond suspension. That's going to work. I don't want to blow anything up, but I think standing pat without making something splashy happen, I think is my nightmares that would that would be what would upset me because to you guys' point you know the west is the west and you got to try to keep up with the joneses i think i think that's mine uh tim have a good call and uh and and a safe drive I, i think that's a pretty interesting answer actually uh the fear is doing absolutely nothing at all like all the things we talk about right now does clay stay does clay go what do the warriors do um, don't you feel like of the three answers, if I gave you the Warriors do something big or the Warriors just totally start dedicating everything to Kaminga and people who haven't turned 25 yet, or they just bring back pretty much the exact same roster minus Chris Paul. It, it, like, isn't that maybe the least interesting thing? Yeah. Is, 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 is doing exactly what you did before. And I don't think that they will do that. I don't either, but it's definitely the most prudent as opposed to expend so many more assets to bring in, you know, Paul George, who you then have to pay a bunch of money to, or Kevin Durant, who you have to pay a bunch of money to and get you back into that second apron. I do think that the more prudent move would be, and maybe they're just all virtue signaling that by saying, you know, we were close, 46 wins, and if we had Draymond, you know, we were a lot closer than you think. It seems to me like they're signaling that, and maybe it's the under-promise and over-deliver idea that you talk about, but I do start to think more and more like a big move 
if it doesn't happen, they're more likely just to bring everyone back. Uh, let's go back to Foster City, the scene of the original crime, and find out uh, and get an update on Pat's vacation. Uh, hi, Pat. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey I'm, I'm guilty as charged. So no, where, 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 where are you going? So. We all, we all want to know. Where are you going no, no, this no, summer? No, no, I, I, no. We're, no, we're exciting. So. But, um, but anyway, I, yeah, I think with the Warriors, you know, you know, NBA players, you know, they're statistically in their prime at 26, 27, 28 years old. And bottom line is Warriors have no one in that age group, and we won't for another three years unless we change the roster. They're all over 32 or they're under 22. And I just think that's a bad place to be in today's NBA. So to, to, we, to me, I agree with the last caller. You know, the biggest fear I have is they don't do much and they just keep it, run it back the same, except that everybody's going to be a year older and a year tired or, I mean, we've seen enough of what they can do, and and they're not going to get better. These guys are not going to get better. They're going to they're on the downside, no matter how you look at it. All of these guys that are, uh, you know, older or whatever. So, you know, for me, you know, what 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 assets do the Warriors have? Well, clearly, Curry is by far and away the greatest asset, and then there's not really even a close second. So, I think for Lakeup, he needs to decide. You know, do we keep Curry? Why he or do we keep him until he retires, and then we have a big celebration and basically get nothing for him or do you get some tremendous value from him now and change this roster so you get a couple guys that are 26 27 that are in their prime so that the team can actually be better next year and be way better in two or three or four years after stuff leaves because we go with like paul george or duran one of these guys you know maybe they do a little better the next year or two but after that you you, you got crumbs, man. You, you got yeah. nothing. No, I mean, no, actually, so. see, this is what I'm arguing, Pat, and I really appreciate your call, and I think it's very well thought out, and, and it's a, a defensible position, but I couldn't disagree with any of it more. Like, honestly, you have no clue what you're left with in two years if it plays out that way because there's a hundred things that are going to happen between now and then. There's three more NBA drafts. There's three more NBA off seasons. There's all kinds of movement that can take place. And Pat, I can help you when you say Joe Lacob needs to decide whether or not he's going to keep Curry and then just have a parade at the end of his career or trade him now. He's already decided he's keeping Steph Curry. It, 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 it is the most interesting concept that keeps coming up that I guarantee you has never come up once inside right. of the Chase Center hallways. Not even come up. And I, and I like I confidently can say that. There's no way they're doing that. In all the what if conversations. Like what if guys, just work with me here. What if we trade Steph Curry and we get seven first round picks over the course of the next 10 years and we really rebuild this thing and in 2037 we're back baby. We're back. Hello? Yeah. Did I lose you guys? Well, I, it, here's the other thing. I also think, another figment of our imagination, what we would get in return for Steph. Right. You heard what he said. Two players who are 25 and in their prime. Nope. No one's giving you that for Steph Curry. Right. Because, and, and I know you're going, wait a minute. No, they, they wouldn't? No, they wouldn't. Because they, they've got to find a way to, to equal $57 million of salary to send back in return, like in order to do that, 25-year-olds usually aren't making that. If 25-year-olds are making that, that means their names are Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. They're not doing that. That like Steph has got to go to a team that's like, okay, that puts us over the top, but we're not putting all our eggs in this basket because he's 37 years old. I just think that in our minds, we're like, wow, the whole world would love to have Steph Yes, they'd love to have him, but what's the what's the function of making that happen? What's the scenario where it works? Who are the players coming back? Like you could build up draft capital. You could do that. You want draft capital for Steph Curry? No. Oh gosh, that no. uh, that idea makes me vomit. You don't want anything for Steph Curry, but the only thing you would get for Steph Curry would be draft capital. And you could look at the other players that were traded and you know, you had the situation where OKC traded Paul George, right? And they got Shea Gildas Alexander, and they got draft picks, and that was a great deal. And that would be what you were hoping for. But even at that, it's taken Oklahoma City three years of SGA yep. to be on their team to get to what? The conference semis? Is that what you want? 
because that's what you'd be getting. There you go. And the OKC is a great yeah. model for trading stars to get assets. And here we are now, what, seven years later? Yeah. And, and they're, they're still chasing it. And they were the one seed, and uh, it didn't go anywhere. Right. We're presented by Fremont Bank. Celebrate.